Guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we have something really cool to show you. We've got to get to the point where, and where is it at? Where we can get the alpha motor cranked. But I don't want to crank it in the car because if there's any issues with the motor, I don't ex suspect that there will be, but in the you know event that there is, I want to make sure that... Um, we're able to work on the motor outside the car, not putting it in and out and the possibility of scraping up the um, paint job on the car. So I went out to redlinestands.com and I'll um, link them below and I purchased a engine run stand from them. The reason why I chose them, and you'll see that when we uh, put this thing together here in a few minutes, but the reason why I chose them is I felt the craftsmanship was better and um, I, I'm not getting paid for this. This is not an endorsement to them, but I do like to, you know, I do like to tell people when something that I purchase is really good that they might be interested in purchasing. So how about we get the box um, opened up, get everything um, on the ground so you can see what, what we have, and then we're going to get it put together and you can watch the whole thing. All right, let's get started. All right, guys, so here is the box, and um, I put a little sticker on the box here that comes in it. Um, that way you can get the information, and of course, it'll be linked below. So it got delivered on a pallet, and I had to go uh, pick it up at the, um, I think it was a, a AAA Cooper logistic place, I had to pick it up. You can have it shipped to your house, but I think it's like $125 extra, at least it was for me. Um, Redline is out of Pensacola, Florida, which is not that far from us here in Alabama. So shipping was really quick. Once I ordered it um, online, it was here literally the next day um, from from Pensacola, Florida, which is just a, about a three and a half hour drive down there. Uh, but anyway, so and shipping, I think, was included as well. So the box is um, got some information on um, this is for the um, dash assembly part. And we'll look at that here. Parker, come get the let's open this up real quick. All right. Um, I went ahead and popped all the metal braces and stuff just so you can do it. So oops. All right. So what I thought we'd do is uh, oh, this was on the box itself, but. What I thought we would do is just go ahead and get everything out of this box um, so to make it easier. We'll lay it all out, then come back to you, and then go from there. But so far, it looks like some of this stuff is already put together. So this may not be that difficult um, to put together, um, but you're going to find out with us. All right, guys, this is it. This is all the pieces that was in the box. One of the things I did not see, I'm gonna look through the box, the box being right over there, one more time, is an instruction manual. Now, it's not that many pieces, so I probably can go off of a picture um, online to put it together, but I don't see anything, any instruction manuals. The only thing that was taped on the outside of the box was this right here. And this talks about um, the upright dash assembly and how it mounts, which is for this piece here. So let us let me kind of look at this and pull a couple of pictures up and see what we're supposed to be doing. And then we'll get started. Um, all the bolts are right there. So we'll, we'll get those laid out. And I mean, it's not, doesn't look that complicated, of course, 
you know, cause these are the sides for the engine right here to mount. Um, so for the point, the mounting points on the, the engine itself. Um, so yeah. All right. So let's get started and try to see if we can figure this thing out. But I went through the box, all levels. I mean, it's two boxes together. It's double box. And we've gone through everything and there's no instructions manual. There may be some sitting on the website. So we'll look at the website. Maybe they're online. Um, and maybe this documentation here says that that was taped as well. But I'll look, look again. So, all right, let me figure it out. We'll get right back. All right, guys. Step one. We did not find instructions. So what we've done is... We just got the picture of it up from their website. And I looked on their website. And I didn't see the, the instructions. I'm not saying that they're not there. I just didn't see them. And it just could have been they were accidentally left out. Um, but I, I can tell you this. From working on this so far, I will tell you this is a solid piece of machine here. I'm, I'm, it definitely won't have a problem <laughs> with the little, the little um, four-cylinder motor for the Alpha. But I will tell you, this thing is solid. So we've got um, the control panel on, and I've got the thing here. It's sitting on that box on the green car, and I've ordered some gauges. You can buy all the gauges and do all that from them, and as well as the um, fuel cell. If you want one, everything can be fully, this thing can be fully outfitted. I'm just... For me, I'm just going to get different types. I'm going a different direction. It wasn't from a price standpoint because it was reasonable, but just I decided to go a different way. So um, let's see. So the control panel's on, and then here, these are for the radiators. I've got them loose. I don't have them tightened because I'll have to put my radiator in here, and, um, and then I'll tighten them down so they'll hold for that alpha motor. Um, so, you know, you can get smaller radiators or big ones. I think that this right here, these four mounting brackets will be fine. So, all right. So I think the next step we're going to do is focus back here and start getting all of these pieces put together. It's really not that much more. It's very easy to do. Um, really, just looking at a picture, you can easily put this thing together. And it's got all, of course, all the hardware and stuff we've got spread out. So, all right, so let's get to the next step. All right, guys, we have got the braces here. This is where your motor mounts are going to be, are going to be uh, put on for the uh, block itself. So here on the four cylinder, the alpha, I've got these and there's some on the other side. So we've got a plate that I've got over here and I'll, show you um and th th sorry about that this is where you're gonna have to fabricate something so i'm gonna have to fabricate something here cut this plate down to match right there so there's gonna be some fabrication that's not redline's fault i mean it's just every motor's different there's no way they could come up with every mounting bracket <laughs> it'd be too expensive so basically something like that will be mounted um, and go from there. So again, we've left the, the screws um, loose so we can move them around. So when I lay the motor down, I can get it, get it just right. That's the beauty of this is you're able to get it just the way you want it before you lock it down with the two, the two bolts there. Um, so now we're going to get the backside. Now here's, here's the difference. So this big arm here, everybody will notice this. This is identical to this engine stand, right? So this is if you want it as an engine stand and you're building your block, you're building the motor up. Or what we're going to do, because we're going to come in with the bell housing, and we're going to put this down here, and then we're going to put these they'll they'll go in if i can set them up right there we go they'll go kind of in like that so let's get some bolts in here and then we'll come back and show you what that looks like because 
my thought process is I'm going to do this and my bell housing is going to connect here holding the back side of the the motor up and I think <laughs> this is strange but I think we might be done so we'll see all right uh let's get this on I'll come right back all right guys we've got again I'm not I'm not going to screw them completely all the way in and tighten them up cuz I don't know how this will fit here yet until we get the engine hoist over here and lay the motor down. And I'm not even really worried about it right now because we're not at the point to do that yet, just yet. So, um, this is of course where your bell housing can get, or um, what's really cool is if you don't use these, you can use this. And this is cool here, because this is just like what's on the engine stand, but it doesn't rotate at all so it's one that if you want just your block to stay fixed back there as you're working on it you're not interested in um you know kind of rotating it like that one does so um and of course the bolts here are interchangeable back and forth there's a few extras left which was nice um i've got the bigger bolts here those are on right here so that'll go that'll go there for the um, where the engine mounts will, will lay, right? So that um, plate right here that I showed you, we'll have to build something up, fabricate something. But yeah, so I think, I think we're good. We're good to go. Um, again, let's see. Yeah, so again, I can take this off and then I can put that on and it acts as um, an, a normal engine stand like that one right over there. So that's really cool. These slide back and forth um, to position where you need them for the motor. And then again, wherever the motor's at, then we'll, um, we'll position it enough back to where we can come in behind for the bell housing. And that'll be mounted there. So that'll be neat. Uh, trying to think. And... You know, that's it. Again, the, the frame down here with the casters, which are heavy-duty casters, those are on. Um, they got locks here, as you can see, right there. So it, it, seems, to, it seems to roll good. Of course, there's no weight on it, but that little motor there doesn't weigh that much. And... Um, and yeah, so let's do a walkthrough and then we'll wrap up the video. So the first thing we did was we installed the brackets here for the control panel. And what you do, it tells you, is on this piece of paper that was um, taped to the box, is you undo these self-tapping screws, then you slide these into this channel, and then you just put the self-tapping screws in and it holds it and it's nice and, nice and tight. And then we put, with the smaller screws, we put the control panel on. And then we came in and we did put the braces on here for the radiator. Now, my radiator's smaller, so I'm going to have to come across with the bar that the radiator can sit down on somehow. I'll have to just do something. Again, no way at all for Redline to know at all that, um, you know, how every single radiator size will be mounted. No way. Uh, so then once we did that, then we built, we built this part up. And again, you just got three bolts here. Those, um, those go in, bolt up. Two on these arms here. These arms will slide around to get them to, um, you know, contract or, or pull back if you need them for whatever size block you have. Once we did that, then we came and I put all this together. Again, I won't be using this, but it's there. And that could be mounted exactly where this one is at, if need be. Um, there are fixed points that go through, through this beam here so that it doesn't slide. It's, it's, it's staying there. I don't have them completely tightened, but the bolts go through and everything. You put your nuts and everything on. And then um, you put your two brackets here. And then, of course, you can, as you can see, you have a lot of spacing. I guess if you even need it more, you could drill more <laughs> if you needed it. But I think they did a good job in, a, a, you know, giving enough spacing between these. 
And these are not screwed, you know, tightened down either because I don't know where the motor's going to go just yet. And so you've got that there so you can switch it out. Or, again, if you want it to, you know, make a fixed point for your block not to move while you're working on it, you've got that. So I think that's it. Very simple. Got some, got some extra screws and stuff left over here if you uh, need them. So I'll put those back in the bag and set those aside. Uh, but yeah, so now the next step is I've ordered some gauges. I'll just wait till those come in and get those put in. I'll get the control panel right here put down here in a few minutes. Uh, this would be for the mechanism you can buy from them for your throttle. Um, this motor here, uh, what we're working on, you know, the throttle's just kind of dapped back down here as you can you can see, let's see, um, here, so I'll be able just to, as you can see here, I'll be able just to feather the throttle from the motor itself. I don't need to create a linkage system for that. Um, although it would be pretty cool to have a lever to come up and down on the throttle. So yeah, all right, let's wrap this thing up. All right, guys, there you have it. Um, we are completed. It literally took my son, Parker and I, to 30 minutes to put this thing together once we unboxed it, but unboxing took seconds. So I will say Redline nailed it as far as building a good stand. I mean, this thing is solid, absolutely solid. I am very, very pleased with it. Um, it's gonna go a long way because not only are we gonna, we're building the the motor for the 67 sitting up there we've got the green one that we're going to be doing a lot of testing on that two liter motor i mean this motor may stay on here for six months or so testing various different um newly fabricated parts i'm going to leave it at that what we're going to be doing for the green car but uh that's the reason why i purchased this i didn't go buy a, just a cheap one off of amazon i searched for a while found redline talked to redline over email um, and then I purchased it off of their website and it was here literally the next day from Pensacola, Florida, up here to Alabama, central, basically Alabama. So I think that's a wrap on this video. Please like, subscribe, ring that bell. I'll list below Redline's information so you can go out there and order one of these for yourself. Feel free to comment below. Make it a great day and God bless.